Have you ever thought that perhaps the, the world has passed you by? I went to see a movie a few years ago called No Country for Old Men, which, uh, which starred uh, Al Gore's former college roommate, Tommy Lee Jones. Tommy Lee Jones played this old Texas sheriff. He'd been sheriff for 30, 35 years, and he was dealing with a new form of crime, drug crime, and in fact involving people here illegally. The movie said about 1980 when the epidemic really was getting wound up in this country of this type of violence that was associated with it. And uh, at the end of the movie, there's a, there's a scene where he's along with the actor Barry Corbin, who's playing another law enforcer who was uh, wounded in a shooting and is now in a wheelchair. And the two of them are having a discussion. And Tommy Lee Jones' character looks out a window, kitchen window, and looks out over the desert. And then just starts talking about how the world that he grew up in no longer exists. In other words, people are walking around the streets with green hair and rings from their noses, and 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 the, the comfort of the world that we knew, a traditional world that we knew, is gone. And I think that for me, growing up in a small town, and and you know, we heard the name marijuana, we didn't really know what that meant. Uh, we didn't even know what it looked like. Uh, we, you know, it was known it was bad, but that was that was really it. And we spent our summer days going to the lake and. We had ropes tied to tree branches, and we'd grab the ropes, and we'd spin around and toss ourselves into the lake and swim, and sometimes we'd fish for rock bass and, and perch and bluegill, and, and and that was about the worst trouble we ever got into. Other than that, maybe a couple of friends sometimes stuffed a dummy with leaves, and, and Halloween, they would throw it up on somebody's porch, ring the doorbell, and then the person would come to the door, and they'd yank a rope and drag the dummy across the porch, and that was considered to be pretty risque stuff. So I've grown up in this world that uh, that is no longer no longer there. That we see that the ravages, in fact, even in locally of drugs like methamphetamine, and we hear about heroin, and and it just I can't I don't know anybody involved with this, but yet I'm told they're all over the place, and that we're surrounded by it. But we're also surrounded by people who tell us, well, the world has changed. We have to we have to have new attitudes, and we have to be tolerant of various behaviors. Came across this at National Review. Transgender woman now transitioning into a dragon. All right, uh, no dead air, please. A male to female transgender woman who prefers the pronoun it says it believes it was born not only the wrong sex, but also the wrong species and has been undergoing human to dragon transition procedures to fix the trouble. The 55-year-old who was born Richard Hernandez, but now goes by Eva Tiamat Baphomet Medusa, has already had a whole slew of transformative work done, tooth extraction, eye coloring, horn implants, ear removal, nose modification, and a procedure to give it a forked tongue. It's also gotten tattoos and scarification on its face and chest to make it look like it has scales instead of human skin. Um... It refers to itself as a mythical beast. I am the dragon lady, is what uh, the beast has said, uh, or it has said, about its new life. Now, are we going to have to have potties that are available for dragons? Are we going to have to have separate bathrooms, or will dragons be allowed to go in and use uh, the same bathroom as your little girl? Uh, I, I, I raise that question because at what point do we have to say, no, we've had enough? We have dealt, we've got same-sex marriage. We've got people pushing for polygamy. We'll have people who'll be saying that they need to marry their horse, cow, pig, dog, or cat, or the tree in the backyard. Now you've got people, there's a woman who walks around, I saw a video a few weeks ago in Norway, who claims she's a cat. She's got a tail attached to her back end. She has cat ears on her head. She's got whiskers on her face, implants apparently. And she, she walks around uh, the city she lives in claiming to be a cat. And now you've got this, uh, this guy turned gal who says, no, I'm a dragon. At, at what point does this foolishness, and that's all it is, at what point does it come to an end? 938, you're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story on KLIX. Yeah, Bill, uh, I've had enough. Uh, I, know, I don't know if you heard about PayPal. I deal with them and... So they've pulled out North Carolina because of the 
homosexual thing going on there, like you're talking about. So I said, okay, I'm going to call PayPal and say I'm going to pull out. They go, well, we do not discriminate. I go, oh, there's that big word, discriminate. Do you know what it means? Because they're discriminating against us. So yeah. They did, so they didn't like it because I was pulling out. I said, I got friends who are going to pull out also. <laughs> I think his name was Dan Schulman. He's the uh, CEO of PayPal. I wonder if he has little girls who are sharing bathrooms with grown men who claim to be women. Right, right. That's what I told him. So anyway, I just want to call in. Thanks. Hey, thank you much for the for the telephone call. Uh, PayPal uh, is doing business, wants to do business in Cuba. Actually, I got a list of places PayPal does business. Maybe we can talk about that in just a few minutes because... It turns out that some of the places that PayPal is already doing business, uh, PayPal wouldn't dare tell them how they should live their lives. But you know, when it comes to the good old USA, it's just more and more of this effort to destroy this country from within. 20 minutes from 10 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 46 on our way to a high in the mid 70s today. Uh, caller referenced PayPal in the last, uh, PayPal, yeah, PayPal. What's a PayPal? How about Papali? He was a good football player. 944, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com, 48. Thank you for joining me this morning. Hey, I got a couple of, a uh, couple of notes too I want to share with you about just, uh, just some of the, uh, the general, general things that go on in our community. First of all. I think they're the, at the moment, I've been on the air 15 months, I think that the folks at Tint Lady are about uh, the longest, uh, I, I, I have an opportunity to talk about a few uh, businesses in the area. I think they've been with me the longest on this program uh, since I got started. Uh, Tint Lady is at 127 Filer Avenue now in Twin Falls, uh, which is a change from its old address, and it's much easier if you're just out and about town. For most people, you have to use uh, uh, Washington Street how many times per day, so you're very close to Tint Lady's uh, new headquarters. Tint Lady will come out and they'll do a free estimate uh, if you need window tints. Window tints can help protect, of course, from the, uh, the, the those rays from the, the sun that will bleach many of your valuables, your furniture, drapes, carpet, but also help keep your home cooler on hot days in the summer, saving on electric bills. You can call and schedule an appointment at 736-8469 or go online, tintladyidaho.com. Locally owned and operated, this is a company that's been in business nearly a quarter century. Hours Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Closed Sundays, but available on Saturday by appointment. And remember, don't squint, get tint. So the caller reference PayPal. You've got a lot of companies that have been making threats against, what, Georgia? Uh, Georgia backed down on its uh, issues related to religious liberty. Uh, protections for clergymen who might be forced to do same-sex weddings, and then you've got uh, you've got North Carolina involved in the same battle. Mississippi just getting into that battle. The governor there uh, went ahead and signed a bill into law. Uh, we've got this from the Daily Caller. Dan Shulman is the CEO of PayPal, and he says that North Carolina's vote or its bill signed into a law by the governor, the bathroom bill that would uh, what they did in North Carolina. Just for a little background, in case you don't know. Uh, North Carolina said, no, they're not going to have bathrooms so men who think they are women can go in and pee next to your little girl at the state level. On the other hand, North Carolina's bill is written, so if you have a private business and you think it will help bring customers into your restaurant or your store, if you allow somebody to come in, a man uh, six feet five inches tall who thinks he's a woman, and pee next to my little girl, uh, they, they will businesses be able to do that. But... The government in North Carolina says, no, no government facilities are going to allow this. And this has got liberals. They've got their knickers and knots over it. PayPal CEO Dan Schulman said it violates the values and principles that are at the core of PayPal's mission and culture. But PayPal's values didn't keep the company from opening and maintaining a global operations center in Malaysia, where homosexual acts are punishable by public lashings and jail sentences up to 20 years. According to Shulman, PayPal's decision to kill 400 jobs in North Carolina reflects PayPal's deepest values. I guess that means molesting little girls and our strong belief that every person has the right to be treated equally and with dignity and respect. So far, Shulman has remained silent on the persecution of homosexuals in Malaysia. Malaysia isn't the only country persecuting gays in which PayPal has set up shop. 
uh, Singapore, uh, the United Arab Emirates. How about Dubai? PayPal is doing business in all of those countries where homosexuality can get your head chopped off. But hey, that's that's okay. We wouldn't we wouldn't dare quibble with those governments, but we'll try and pressure people in the good old USA to join us in hell someday. This is from the Christian Post. In an act of extraordinary hypocrisy, PayPal, which last month announced its plans to expand into Cuba, has decided not to expand into North Carolina because the state is determined to keep its public bathrooms and locker rooms safe. PayPal has now sent a loud and clear message to America the common sense values of conservative Americans should be scorned, the destructive values of Cuban communists, including decades of human rights abuses that continue to this hour, should be embraced. What in blazes is wrong with the liberal mindset in this country? Uh, you know, Michael, Michael Savage, he may be a little over the top. But when he says that liberalism is a mental disease, he's spot on. How can any liberal Democrat out there tell me that this is good for us, Coach? Well, we wouldn't want to, we wouldn't want to hurt the dragon lady's feelings. If people think they're dragons, then we should allow them to believe they're dragons. Look, if you want to go cut off your private parts and get horns stuck into your forehead, and have your body scarred so that you look like scales and tattooed up to look like a dragon, that's your own dang business. And remember, it's not reversible. It's your own dang business. But when you stand there and say that everybody else has to come up and give you a big smack on the lips because, you know, it would hurt your feelings otherwise, ain't happening. I'm sorry, we're not doing it. I don't know how much longer we can engage in this culturally without things collapsing all around us. But this notion that somehow it's okay, and in Seattle, where they're now allowing men, in fact, they've already had one guy who came in and undressed in a ladies' locker room, and there were little girls who were taking swimming lessons there. And he just did it because he could get away with it. A liberal woman who sits on the city council replied and responded saying, well, we're going to have to accept some of these issues so we don't hurt the feelings of other people. Once again, they are willing to let people who are dangerous come in and use the facilities used by your little girls because, well, you know, we wouldn't want to hurt a child molester's feelings. Ten minutes away from 10 o'clock. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310. KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. It's 48. We have a caller with us. You're on the air. Good morning, Bill. This is Pat. Yes, sir. You know, when I was a boy, we had to pay a quarter and go behind a curtain to see what we see walking up and down the streets as normal life today. <laughs> you know, it, it, it just appalls me. And, and I probably insulted a young lady one day, but she had so many tattoos on her. I walked up to her and gave her a quarter. And she said, what's this for? She says, I used to have to pay a quarter to see this. <laughs> but, you know, it, it's, it's pretty bad when, when society has become the bottom of the rung. Well, you know, there is there is no what you call cohesion left. There is no tradition, and there is no sense that we should have some rules. Everything goes right. Well, apparently so. I, I I'm sorry, my children get didn't get to get raised that way. So I'm sorry that that the rest of society didn't enforce their children to become a, the proper adults. That I I I I fear for the your grandchildren to follow into the same hole that the, that the society seems to be crawling into. Well, I thank you much for the telephone call. It's good to know that there are people still holding the the line and some old values. I know trying to raise my own daughter, and I would tell her that we believed in our faith uh, that homosexual acts were wrong. Although, you know, homosexuals don't like it when you say, well, I, you know, do what you please, but we don't believe in it. Then they claim that you're being bigoted and mean-spirited and that you need to come over and give them a big wet smack on the lips. But she was raised being told that we just don't believe in that. She was raised being told that we don't believe that men should dress up as women and vice versa. She was raised being told that we don't believe that children should be killed in their mother's wombs. But dang it, if she wouldn't come home from school and some school teacher would be telling them, well, you can't be judging people and, you know, this, if, if, if Jimmy has two mommies, that's okay. And I, I had to battle that constantly as a dad. And I'm sick of other people out there trying to inculcate my children or recruit them into a lifestyle that I don't want them to partake. 
You're up next at 952, and you're on the air on KLIX. You know, these people are so far off center. They're so miserable that they just can't hardly stand it, and they somehow they find a little pleasure here and there, but they've just constantly got to be dragging people down. And you say, you know, they're, hey, it's, it's a joke. And, and to sit here and allow it to occur like it doesn't matter, as it just abs- it just soaks into our very being, and then you say to yourself, what happened to us? Well, I guess we decided to ignore it, or it was distasteful to be involved, so uh, we didn't want to have anything to do with it. Well, I'll tell you what, it's staring us right in the face, and I don't know if we can stop it. Thanks, Bill. Hey, thank you much for the call. You know, we may well be past the point of no return. Uh, this was once a great nation. I, I don't know that it any longer is. You're on the air with Bill Colley on Top Story. Good morning. Good morning, Bill. The other day, President Obama just chastised the American public because, and called them racist because they would not allow correction because if they own property, uh, apartments or homes or renting stuff, they wouldn't rent to convicted uh, felons that were out of prison. And at the same time, the Department of Justice is uh, looking at making it a federal offense to deny climate change. I'll listen on the air. Hey, thank you. You know, when it comes to the convicts, and you've got to, you now have to rent to the convicts, first of all, it's your own dang private property. I don't buy into all of these public accommodation laws. A discrimination, the government can't discriminate, but as a private citizen, I should be allowed to do that. Uh, that, that, that. That does not apply to me, and these laws, I just, I'm sorry, I think, I have a friend every day, his name's Bob Bennett, he's a wonderful man, he's, uh, he's the leader uh, in his state of the Fellowship uh, of Christian Athletes, and, and Bob is a devout evangelical Christian. He is helping his son take care of his grandchildren uh, because Bob's daughter-in-law, a few years ago, she was working as her church secretary when the church hired a convicted felon. But, you know, we've got to be compassionate, and we've got to allow this convicted felon to rebuild his life. Uh, and then uh, one night before he left work, he abducted the church secretary, drove her into another state where he then raped and killed her. And uh, I haven't seen Bob now since I left Delaware, but when we were still getting together for coffee some mornings, I can only tell you that it's very difficult in his life as a devout Christian to still find the way to offer forgiveness and to still find a way to get around this. Now, we'd like to believe that all people are redeemable, but at some point you also have to have at least your radar up to say, this guy is still dangerous. And I don't know how, how you can have a president now say, you know, you need to move more of these people into your properties. Oh, because we're hell. And I'm going to give them their voting rights back, and they'll all vote for a free lunch, and they'll vote for people like me. And you Republicans are bad meanies. Uh, we need more illegal aliens voting, more Muslims voting, and more convicts voting, and therefore then we'll have our socialist republic forever for good. I am so glad. The best thing you can say about Barack Obama come January 20th next year is he's gone because he has been culturally a disaster for this country, for American values and traditions, and yet he promotes this racial discord. Take a listen to this. This is from Matt Finn, Fox News Channel, about something called flag stomping. Have you heard about this? Have you heard about the people who are involved in it? The flag stompers tell us they're doing this to take a stand against black suppression in America, specifically pointing to some cases where white police officers shot black men. We researched this group, and it appears they started last year. They began by encouraging people to burn flags on September 11th. After that, the movement seemed to have died down, but now they're using election events as a stage for their demonstrations. And we received thousands of comments online about this story. Most people extremely disturbed, but this type of expression still Stepping on the flag is protected by America's freedom of speech. I used to be a believer that, well, you know, it's true. If people want to burn a flag or they want to urinate on it or they want to use it as toilet paper, yeah, you know, we got to protect that. But then when I was about 28, 29 years old, I got sent to cover a reunion of Iwo Jima survivors. 
And Survivors is the best way you can describe it because it was just horrible, terrible carnage. And those old men told me that the moment that they, they knew that they would win and that we had to do it and what allowed them to summon the courage to cr- climb out of those, those little holes they'd been digging with their bare hands and the volcanic ash and to fight on for another 40 days was when they looked up and they saw a group of Marines and sailors raising a flag atop Mount Suribachi. And that meant to them that there was still hope. Today, you have these scoundrels, and they're allowed to get away with this. And other than Fox in that report, you know dang well the media supports what they do and promotes it. And that, my friends, we have to stop. Rush Limbaugh is coming up next following the news at 10 o'clock from Fox. Bill Colley with you this morning and saying, hey, God willing, if the creek don't rise, tomorrow I get to be back here between 8 and 10 o'clock. We'll do it all over again. Sean Hannity following the news at 1 o'clock this afternoon. Glenn Beck after 4 o'clock news. Dave Ramsey tonight. Try and have a great day.